Now, you may recall uh, from our earlier discussion of uh, mixing chamber and uh, uh, the open feed water heater that the mixing chamber is a strategy for increasing the temperature of uh, stream without directly heating it. So, basically there we had steam and then the liquid which we wanted to heat the two were mixed together and uh, the exiting stream was still compressed uh, still liquid but at a higher temperature. Okay, so, that is a strategy. Now, mixing certainly is irreversible. So, there will be exergy destruction as a result of mixing. But the hope here is that heating the stream uh, by mixing it with a high temperature steam would be uh, much more efficient or would cause lesser exergy destruction than heating it in a high temperature reservoir. That is the uh, hope okay, and that is what we will try next. This strategy is called regenerative feed water heating. Okay, it is called regenerative feed water heating. The basic idea here is to accomplish an increase in the enthalpy of the feed water using steam that has been extracted from the turbine after undergoing partial expansion. So, we extract uh, some of the steam from the turbine after it undergoes partial expansion and then mix the feed water before going into the boiler with the steam so that the temperature of the feed water is increased and the amount of heat that we have to add in the boiler will be reduced as a result of this strategy. And the external uh, irreversibility due to temperature difference will also go down because the feed water will now enter the boiler at a higher temperature than before. Earlier it was entering at almost condenser temperature, maybe just slightly above condenser temperature. Now it will be at a much higher temperature. Uh, compared to the condenser temperature. So, hopefully um, this uh, will reduce the rate of exergy, this will definitely reduce the rate of exergy destruction in the boiler. Okay. So, this reduces the heat to be added in the boiler, but the downside of this uh, strategy is that since you are extracting a part of the steam from the turbine before it undergoes full expansion, the amount of work that is uh, developed in the, the amount of power that is developed in the turbine also decreases. Okay. Now, the uh, enthalpy transfer or the heating of the feed water can be accomplished in two different ways. One is of course, mixing. Okay. So, we take the steam that is extracted from the turbine, take the feed water that is coming from the pump, mix them together and then the stream leaves at the extraction pressure. So, everything is at constant pressure okay, we will see that now. The other uh, strategy is to use the so called closed feed water heating. Okay. We will see this also. Let us start with open feed water heating. So, here as this uh, block diagram shows, okay, the steam enters the turbine uh, with a considerable amount of superheat. It then undergoes expansion. Now, part of the steam is extracted here. So, this is at the extraction pressure and sent to the feed water heater. Now, the feed water which has been uh, pumped from the condenser pressure to the extraction pressure enters the feed water heater, where these two streams are mixed together and then uh, saturated liquid at the feed at the extraction pressure leaves the feed water heater. It is then pumped to the boiler pressure and the cycle is repeated. The notice that the feed water heater because it is a open feed water heater where streams are mixed, all the streams have to be at the same pressure. So, this is at extraction pressure. And this is also at the extraction pressure. Okay. It is not pumped to the boiler pressure, but it is pumped to the extraction pressure. And the leaving uh, and the stream that leaves the feed water heater is also at the extraction pressure. So, the feed water heater operates at constant pressure, which is equal to the extraction pressure. Let us uh, take a look at this on a TS diagram. So, the expansion in the turbine is from 1 to 2 s for part of the steam. So, let us say x kg of per second of steam is extracted from the turbine. So, that undergoes ex, uh, expansion from the boiler pressure to the extraction pressure. So, notice that this is the extraction pressure. This is the boiler pressure and this is the condenser pressure.
So, part of the steam that is x kg per second is extracted uh, from the turbine. The rest of the steam 1 minus x kg per second undergoes expansion up to uh, the condenser pressure. Now, this is uh, then taken to the condenser where it exchanges heat with the ambient, loses heat and then it leaves the condenser as saturated liquid at condenser pressure. It is now pumped to the uh, extraction pressure, not the boiler pressure, it is now pumped to the extraction pressure and taken to the feed water heater where it is mixed with the steam which is coming from here. So, the steam which was at uh, state 2s which was slightly superheated, uh, as it loses heat it condenses at constant pressure and uh, this uh, liquid water which is a compressed liquid is now heated from state 5s to uh, 6. So, at the exit we have saturated liquid at the extraction pressure. So, the mass flow rates of the extraction uh, and the uh, liquid water are adjusted. In other words, the extraction mass flow rate is adjusted so that at the exit to the feed water, we get saturated liquid at the extraction pressure, which is then pumped to the boiler pressure and then again it goes back to the boiler pressure. Notice that the water when it enters the boiler now is at a much higher temperature than it was before. So, this should definitely reduce the exergy destruction in the boiler and hopefully the second law efficiency of the cycle will go up. Okay. First law efficiency may go down, it is possible because we are, we are now losing some of the work that we could have produced in the turbine. Okay. So, let us um, work with some real numbers and then see what happens. So, we will take the, the same cycle that we had before, keeping the boiler pressure and condenser pressure the same and other things the same and then see uh, the effect of open feed water heating. So, state 1 is the same as before, state 2 s again is now at the extraction pressure, okay. 3 s is the same as before that is at the condenser pressure, same uh, specific entropy as uh, s 1. So, that is the same as before, state 4 is the same as before. So, let me just uh, maybe show this with a slightly different color. So, this is different from before. So, state 2s is different from before, other states are same as uh, same as before. Now, 5s is different from before because 5s is at the uh, extraction pressure and not the extraction pressure and not the uh, boiler pressure. Earlier, it would have been at the boiler pressure. So, this is different. State 6 and 7 is of course, we are not present in the previous cycle at all, but this is saturated liquid, this is compressed liquid at entry to the boiler. So, the uh, extraction uh, amount of steam to be extracted from the turbine may be uh, obtained by applying uh, SFEE to the feed water uh, uh, to the feed water heater and we get and this gives us x to be equal to 0.313. So, for every kilogram per second uh, that enters the turbine, we extract 0 0.313 kilogram per second after partial expansion to a pressure of 40 bar. So, heat supplied in the boiler or rate of heat addition in the boiler may be evaluated like this H1 minus H7 is which is 2363.17. Let us see uh, 2363 uh, compared to 3260. So, you can see that there is a considerable reduction in the uh, amount of heat that is being added in the boiler. Heat rejected uh, 12884.1. Notice that heat rejected appears to be less only because of um, uh, the reduced mass flow rate through the condenser. The state points remain the same. So, if you look at the regenerative cycle, 
State point 3s and 4 are the same as before as we have mentioned, but because the mass flow rate is reduced, uh, the rate of heat reduction, heat rejection in the condenser is less. Now, what produced by the turbine uh, comes out to be 1096. Notice that um, the extracted steam undergoes expansion only up to uh, the extraction pressure and 1 minus x undergoes expansion from state 1 all the way to the condenser pressure and the turbine work decreases. So, this is 1096 compared to 1407. Okay. So, 1096 compared to 1407. Now, we have two pumps, uh, one uh, which is uh, pumping from the feed water heater to the boiler, another one which is pumping from the condenser to the feed water heater. So, the total work uh, supplied to the pump is uh, power supplied is 17.8 kilojoule per kilogram. Net power is 1079 okay? and the thermal efficiency of the uh, cycle comes out to be 45.66. So, you can see that the efficiency of the cycle has actually increased. Although the work output from the turbine has decreased, the reduction in the heat added in the boiler is more than that. So, that the overall efficiency of the cycle has actually increased. So, regenerative heat feed water heating improves the efficiency of the uh, cycle, although the specific power output decreases. Okay. Remember, we said three metrics, specific power output, efficiency of the cycle, second law efficiency. Now, efficiency of the cycle has improved. Let us look at second law efficiency. So, rate at which exergy is supplied may be calculated uh, in the same manner as before. So, we get this to be 1535. TH remains the same because we have not in, uh, changed the boiler pressure or increase the degree of superheat. We have maintained it the same to enable a fair comparison. So, rate at which exergy is recovered comes out to be this. So, the second law efficiency is now 76.69. So, it has almost come back to the same value as what we saw for the basic cycle. And so, this suggests that the rate of exergy destruction in the boiler is less. Okay, and that uh, turns out to be the case. It is 262.32 compared to 584.15. So, it is almost half of what it was before. But there is additional exergy destruction now in the feed water heater because we are using a mixing process. So, it is uh, that comes out to be 95. So, 262 plus 95 comes out to about 357. So, 357 kilojoule per kg is the uh, total exergy destruction, additional exergy or total exergy destruction. Now, we have to compare that with, I am sorry, we have to compare that with 584. It is still considerably less than the 584 that we saw without uh, regenerative feed water heating. So, as we said before, feed water, uh, the improvement in uh, efficiency and the reduction in the exergy uh, uh, destruction in the boiler is because the feed water enters the boiler at a much higher temperature than before. So, what uh, we will do next is to discuss uh, closed feed water heater. So, open feed water heater as we already said operates at uh, the same pressure. So, the entering st uh, steam is at the extraction pressure, the entering liquid feed water is also at the extraction pressure and the heated uh, feed water leaves at the extraction pressure. Now, closed feed water heater is more uh, like a heat exchanger and that can operate with the different pressures for the extracted steam and, uh, and the feed water. Okay. So, we will take a look at that strategy also. Uh, next, before we move on to address uh, the uh, shortcoming with the uh, regenerative feed water heating. The shortcoming of the regenerative feed water heating is that the specific work has, uh, has decreased. Okay. 
So, the specific work has decreased. So, we need to address that. The first law efficiency has improved, second law efficiency has also improved. So, what we need to look at now uh, are strategies for improving the specific power when we add regenerative feed water heating.